This is episode 424 of the Rio Grande Foundation's Tipping Point New Mexico. I'm Paul Guessing, president of the Rio Grande Foundation New Mexico's free market think tank. You can find out more about the foundation at riograndefoundation.org. I'm very pleased to be joined for this week's podcast by Audrey Trujillo. She is the Republican Secretary of State candidate here in New Mexico, and she will be on the ballot this November. Welcome to Tipping Point New Mexico, Audrey. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Um, Secretary of State is an uh, important statewide race, and I want to get into a lot of details about it. But before we talk about the job that you're running for this November, let's talk a little bit about yourself and your interest in New Mexico's election processes and other issues that the Secretary of State handles. But let who is Audrey Trujillo? Well, you know, I'm a born and raised here New Mexican. I love my state. Uh, my family's here. I'm raising my family. My mom and dad are still here. And, you know, I see throughout the years, I you know, I just turned 50 in March. Well, and... we didn't have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, you know what? Age is a blessing, I think, you know, that a lot of people don't get to have. But, um, and it comes with wisdom. Um, being here in New Mexico, I've seen a lot of changes go on and not so great changes. I think a lot of our culture and our traditions are being um, taken away from the people here. And we feel a lot of us feel um, very disrespected. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm from here. I'm from New Mexico. I, I just want to change things for the betterment of all people here that live here. And one of the biggest problems that I see here is the confidence in our elections. I, I've here, everywhere I go, I've been to 33 counties, and that's the same topic that comes up, you know, that people do not believe that their votes are counting. And that's a very big concern when it comes to um, our democracy. You know, people stop going out and voting and participating in elections when, when you don't have confidence in them. Sure thing. Well, uh, that's you know an important part of uh, a democracy or a democratic republic. Even involves it's absolutely a democrat <laughs> republic. It absolutely involves sound elections, and that, mm -hmm. as you state, is uh, critical in. Uh, uh, in kind of having faith in the system, and uh, that's a critical part of mm -hmm. the Secretary of State's role. Um, so, you know, that, so a that, little bit more of my background, I guess I yeah, should tell sure. you. Sure. So, being born and raised here, I did go to University of New Mexico. Um, they, we used to laugh and call it the University Near Mom. <laughs> I was the first in my family to graduate from college. And then my sister and then my mother went back to school, and, and now we all have, we have three masters in our family. And my, my daughter, my daughter actually, she's really excited because, you know, she sees these women in her family, and she's like, well, Mom, I want to go to college. And she's only 12 right now, so, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're, we're really trying hard to create a path for our women in, in, in New Mexico to know that they can make a difference and and college and education and and even if it's not college but you can succeed in New Mexico. I've been um, married to my husband for 21 years. We share three children together. We have uh, two older boys that are actually going to the University of New Mexico as well and we want our kids to stay here and and be able to prosper here in New Mexico and not leave somewhere else. But um, many of our friends, their children are just, you know, they get their education here and then they leave to another state. And that's, that's something we need to stop. Um, we have a lot of talent here. Our young are very smart. We have a lot of smart kids, regardless of what, where we're at in our education. Um, we do have a lot of talent here. We mm -hmm. got to keep our talent here. All right. Well, uh, the Secretary of State's role, uh, as people primarily understand it, has a lot to do with elections and election integrity and uh, some controversial issues, just to say uh, the least. Obviously, we've seen a lot of discussion in the national media and to an extent in New Mexico's media about uh, the state of our electoral system. Uh, you know, we obviously have uh, a Democrat in that job currently, and uh, there are people who have expressed concerns, including yourself, about the integrity of that system. So talk about kind of dually at the same time the role of the Secretary of State 
in the elections and some of the problems that you see currently with regard to the way the Secretary of State is carrying out her job? Sure. <clears throat> well, the Secretary of State is an executive position, a statewide secretary. You know, the Secretary of State actually is the record keeper of New Mexico. Everything that happens goes back to the Secretary of State to be able to be filed correctly and recorded. Um, <clears throat> you know, there is so many things that we can do better than what our current Secretary of State is doing. Number one of the fails I see is our voter rolls are not clean. You know, we have um, different systems that are supposed to be in place to be able to do that, like this ERIC system, and it's not doing its job. So we need to figure out other ways to make sure we don't have people that have been either, you know, died or or not living here in, in the state anymore. Those kind of things we need to do. That's That's just basically housekeeping. So before we go on, who's mm -hmm. Eric and what is the failed system? And uh, uh, let's go with that first. Okay, it's the electric, I mean electric, <laughs> election recording. Uh, basically what they do is it's, it's a non-for-profit organization, and it's actually funded by Soros. And what they do is they collect all the, the, the information for everybody who's registered in the states. And what they're supposed to do is through the DMV, once you go and register to a different state, they're supposed to clean up that registration and say, you know, if someone moved to Colorado and take you off the listing in New Mexico. Well, what we're seeing is that's not happening. The system is failing. And, and so, somewhere along the line, we don't, you know, we don't know wh whether it's the Secretary of State, you know, that's doing it. But it's not working, and we're seeing a lot of people still on there that shouldn't be on there. Okay, so Eric uh, is a system that is used to update voter rolls. Yes. But that system is not working, so it's uh, uh, something that you would change um, and try to do something different. Uh, right. Is there a specific system? Would it be just something that New Mexico adopts on its own? Uh, I, I'm not, you know, Rio Grande so, Foundation works on economic <laughs> policy. I'm yeah. not a not a whiz on the election. So talk right. about what, what you would do differently there. So I think we need to bring it local. I, need to, I think we need to do this in our state. Because when you look at our population, especially of voters, we, we're not that many. You know, one thing, we have a lot of land, we're a beautiful state, but we don't have a lot of a big population here. So these kind of things are doable in this state. Not to say that it would work in, in, in other bigger states, but we are spending so much money on election integrity and different systems, such as the, the machines that scan our voting, and people are still not having confidence. That's a problem. And, you know, if we can spend less money on that and actually pour the money where we need it in a system that we all can agree works for everybody, regardless of your, of your um, affiliation, you know, what party you belong to. To me, New Mexico is such a melting pot and we have so many diverse ideas. The only thing that we can all agree with, and it's not the only thing, but one of the things that we can agree with is the fact that we want our votes to count as they're cast. And, you know, unfortunately, when you see, um, when, there, when there's no transparency in the system and people stop believing in the system, you get less people, part, you know, to, to go out and vote. And that's not what we want. We want people to be participating. Now, um, from personal experience, I can talk to you about the voter roll issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I think it was three or four years ago when Albuquerque Public Schools, they changed that election law uh, towards the end of Susana Martinez's administration, uh, which unified the uh, the local elections. It gave lo localities the option, but here in, in Albuquerque, uh, we did that. Mm -hmm. And so APS had a mail-in election in which they were asking for uh, a lot more money and whatnot. And I got call after call after call from people who said, you know, so-and-so, my daughter, so-and-so, my grandma, you know, they they died in the case of the grandma or they, mm -hmm. they moved out of state in case of the kids. 
uh, people were getting ballots after ballots that really didn't belong to anybody. And Mm -hmm. um, that seems like a huge issue when it comes to the voter rolls. So, I mean, just what one or two ideas about how you really address that issue specifically uh, in ways that maybe aren't being done now? Well, you know, that is the biggest problem, I think, the voter rolls here. Um, first of all, I would eliminate the, the voting mail-in ballots because if we don't have a system that can make sure that we are only sending out ballots that are eligible voters, then, you know, you're, you're sending out these, these ballots and people are getting numerous ballots you know, if there's somebody nefarious in there, they're going to send in those ballots, and those are votes. And, you know, those are ineligible votes, but they are making, you know, they're, they're impacting what the turnout is. And that right there is election fraud. Mm-hmm. Um, how to even find out what or where, it, I mean, it, it, it turns into a bigger problem. So until we can fix that and guarantee our rules are clean, and put in a, a, you know, something in place of this Eric system or anything else that's not working right now, I think we have to vote in person and in on the day of elections. Now, uh, again, I am not an expert on all of this. I do remember when that was a specific local election that was mail-in. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we have absentee ballots. Of course, those are legal. Uh, right. Have... Have there been changes made due to COVID uh, on the mail-in ballot situation? Uh, I know the legislature considered a big, very ambitious bill mm-hmm. uh, this session, but it didn't pass. So where where do things stand in terms of mail-in ballots uh, in New Mexico at this point? So during the emerg- emergency orders, that's was when COVID was around, and, and it's we're still under emergency orders, um, the Secretary of State, our governor, they got they they received more power at that time right. to make decisions that they didn't have to go through the the process which is going through the legislatures and changing that and during that time they took advantage of that and one of the things that you saw was these absentee ballots without even being requested being sent out and one of the ways they did that is they sent out letters from the secretary of state telling people that they were going to receive an absentee ballot unless they sent this paperwork back with their signature to let them um, vote in person. And that has never been done before. You know, that was kind of a a way to trick people. Um, Just it was going away from the actual um, process that has always been in place where you go and you request an absentee ballot. So what happened was a lot of these people during election time, you know, we get busy, you know, tons of, of we get a lot of mail in the in the mail, um, especially during campaign. People didn't see this letter and they threw it away, not thinking that it was anything important. And they were given absentee ballots, regardless if they were going to go um, in person or not. So like my parents up north, they they received that letter. They didn't they didn't look at it. <laughs> And, you know, right before the couple of days, my mom calls me. She's like, what is this about? You know, and she sent me a screenshot of it and I read it and saw exactly what they were doing. And I told her, do, you know, just send it in and make sure you guys vote in person because they do not believe that you should be sending anything in the mail. They don't agree with the bill. They, so much um, mail gets lost and it's OK. I think it's a 7 percent um they're allowed 7% of mail to, to be lost through the U.S. Postal Service. And it's just not a good way to secure your vote. So they, they, you know, they were able to vote in person, but there was my sister-in-law and her husband. They, they didn't see this notice. And when they went to their voting place, their, their poll location, they were turned away. And told that they had been they had received an absentee ballot and they had to bring that absentee ballot to them, or mail it in. And this happened across the state. Mm. We heard this happening a lot. And some people, like you said, had got numerous absentee ballots for people that weren't even living there, in their locations. 
um, people that hadn't lived there in 10 years, you know, were getting these absentee ballots sent out to them because this letter was sent out. And obviously, if someone's not there, they're not going to send that letter back. So we believe that's one of the major reasons why, you know, the confidence is down in New Mexico and probably possibly the way they were able to, um, you know, change the election rules at the the time of a COVID epidemic. So Now, uh, we're still in an emergency, as you mentioned. Yes. Uh, is it your understanding that those same COVID uh, kind of loose rules will be applied in this November's election? Or um, I, I haven't heard much about that, quite honestly. You know, if they can do it, they will do it. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people are talking about an, an epidemic coming right before the elections again and us getting, you know, going back to the lockdowns and everything else. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I think a lot of people are on to this and they, they're, they're paying attention. Prior to this, I don't think people were really paying attention to the elections. They weren't really paying attention to even politics in general. But now people see um, how their these elections have consequences, and they're seeing in real time um, our gas prices, our economy, you know, businesses being shut down forever. I think it was over 700 businesses in New Mexico alone that will never be, you know, they're they're not part of our our businesses here, small businesses, and it's unfortunate. You know, it trickles down to our our kids. Um, our elderly people on fixed incomes, this this state is in turmoil, and we really need to get back to the basics, and that is taking care of our elections. Okay, so uh, Secretary of State, you know, uh, obviously there's a lot that you may want to do, but mm -hmm. oftentimes uh, you're, you may not be able to do that by yourself because uh, you, you need the legislature to act, but uh, I know voter ID is something that is uh, a lot of people want to see. It's it's very strong in the polls, mm -hmm. um, but you know I suspect that uh, that's the legislature again. So talk about issues like that uh, and where you can and can't uh, really do things by by yourself. Absolutely. Again, we are not. In the position to, we're not writing bills in the Secretary of State. <laughs> right. That's something that you know she's she the current Secretary of State has gone in trouble for doing. Um, one of the the things that she did was she wanted to do straight ticket voting, and that got thrown out with the New Mexico. Um, well, if it, it was the senators actually that took it to the Supreme Court, New Mexico Supreme Court, and that got thrown out because it it's not something she's supposed to be doing or changing um, without the without the legislatures. But um, as far as where it comes for voting ID, I mean, we have eighty percent of us it doesn't matter what party believe we should have some form of voter ID, especially because we are a border border state. Um, we have over 149 countries coming through, and, and, you know, a lot of these people are allowed to get a Social Security number. They're allowed to get a license here in New Mexico. Those things are allowed here in New Mexico, mm -hmm. and th those are the only things you need to register to vote. So um, when it comes down to what we can do in the Secretary of State office is we have to encourage those legislatures to put those things on the ballot to secure, actually secure elections. What they were implementing with the last bill that we had that actually got filibustered out with the 144, um, those things were not even considered. It was more about getting more people to vote in our elections and not really concerned about whether they are or not were eligible voters. She wanted to implement even 16-year-olds at one point um, to vote. I have kids. I know where their mind is. They're not paying taxes. They don't understand, you know, the impact of different bonds and things that go into these bills. And when you have to vote, you know, you have to have a certain type of um, mentality. And and one of the things that we have to consider is when you're not a taxpayer, you know, you're going to look at things and be, oh, this is great. You know, this sounds good. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing their, ed you know, their, their homework on this stuff. So I am not 
in agreement with that. I think, you know, my kids just are eligible this year and last year to vote. And they were so excited because it's a right. You know, it, it's something that has it's a constitutional right, number one. And it should be something that you want to do. You know, it should be your civic duty, but it should not be forced. So automatic um, voting registration is I'm not I'm not happy with that because I still think that we are free to make those choices. And if you want to register to vote, you register to vote because you're you want to be part of the, the process. Um, but you should not be forced to vote. Right. And again, uh, this was part of some legislation that was introduced and um, went through numerous, numerous changes uh, this session. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and of course, as the Secretary of State, uh, you know, part of your uh, job is to implement whatever, quite frankly, the legislature says. Now, how would you take where things are right now in Santa Fe with the Secretary of State and, and try to manage things differently. Do you have specific uh, proposals that you would like to uh, implement that you, you can actually do? Because unfortunately, yeah. again, you know, it's one of those things. And, um, you know, just a, as an aside, as a general rule, uh, I, I tend to like policies where one person, the buck stops here kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it would be nice if that sometimes had a, a secretary of state where you could really uh, implement some of these policies. Of course, I like the legislature because they have to vote on things. They, right. they, they have to put their names out there. Secretary of state, it's only once every four years. So mm -hmm. uh, what, what would you do differently uh, on some of these electoral issues well, one of the things that we do do under the Secretary of State is we work with businesses. Um, I would like to streamline the business processes, make it easier for people to start businesses in New Mexico, um, cut some of the red tape that we have, and also the time. You know, a lot of these things should be done a lot more quickly. And I see that, you know, we're losing a lot of our businesses to other states because of the fact it takes so long to start a business here. And that's, that's a concern because in a state that's lost so many businesses, we should be working really hard to make it easy for people to, to come here. Um, another thing that I would like to do is um, just make sure that we are transparent in everything that we do. We shouldn't hide behind our positions. We should be have an open door to the public. Um, there should be a better um, understanding of what we can or can't do within the office. But it's not just for us. It's also for the, the people to know. Um, county clerks, you know, they have their elected officials. And I think we need to give them more power versus it only being here at the state level. I think the counties have a lot of power within their counties, and they're all different. So what works in Bernalillo County not necessarily works in another smaller county. So those are things that we need to discuss, you know, resources. Um, like I said, we, we spent $52 million on machines that were not certifiable, and we have documentation on that. We have letters from the Secretary of State acknowledging that, and... Talk about those machines. Why spend so uh, much money on this, you know? For a minute. You, uh -huh. I, I, they're Dominion machines, right? Yes. And uh, what is and, the and specific? And there's other, there's other machines. They're not all called Dominion machines. But what, what is the specific issue, though? Those machines have made a, uh, uh, made a lot of controversy, or they become a center of controversy. Uh, and, and during this primary election, there were concerns uh, expressed specifically down in Otero County mm -hmm. about... Uh, the lack of certification of those yeah. machines and the, the uh, Secretary of State uh, issued a writ of mandamus and you had mm -hmm. uh, quite a back and forth there in the media for several days. But uh, share, share uh, your views on that, shed some light yes. on that situation. Well, first of all, in the New Mexico handbook that is given to every Secretary of State and you abide by those, um, you know, the, 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 the processes that are in there, you are supposed to certify these machines. 
This in particular machine that we have here in New Mexico, 5.4, was not certified. The last time it was certified was 2017. And the reason why they couldn't certify is they didn't have a system that was able to certify Who is they? Um, well, the Secretary of State, number one. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's very important to be able to certify these machines. Because what happens is from year to year, everything changes, just like any kind of technology. We need to make sure that the technology is being is compatible with with the systems that we have here in New Mexico, and if we're not certifying things, and then we're passing them through these um, committee chairs, which that's what they did, the electoral committee that they had, and deciding on to just go ahead and certify them, even though they were not being they weren't able to certify them through through this company. I mean, how does that give people the confidence that these these uh, machines are working? You know, it, it, it just totally puts a question there. And, and the commissioner's jobs are to question those things. And I was all for it because they should be questioned. Why are we not, you know, why are we doing elections on machines that are not certifiable? Mm -hmm. You know, not only that they're not certified, but they're not certifiable. We don't have the, the ability to certify them. So, uh, I mean, do you uh, want to replace those machines with... All paper ballots. I mean, for people who have voted, which I hope mm -hmm. all of our listeners have, you're probably familiar with the system, which um, at least in person, uh, you have a paper ballot. You have mm -hmm. a little black marker that sits there and you circle in those uh, those lines. So right. we have a, a system that does involve paper ballots, but the ultimate tally is uh, created by those machines. What would you do yes. differently to replace that? Well, with these machines, because they, they're, they're so porous, there's so many ways to manipulate them. And a lot of these county clerks are not technically savvy. They're not trained in, the, in the, the process of how these machines work. So even if they do certify them in, within their counties, they don't even know what to look for, you know. And that kind of training takes, takes somebody very technical, someone that knows the machines. The, you know, and, and the only people that go out there to actually look at this stuff is is the Dominion machine people. And to me, I think we need a third party to look at these, you know, every every detail of these machines. Um, you know, the, the county clerks, we do have paper ballots. So I believe in some of these counties, because, you know, they're small, like in Otero County, we brought up Otero, um, I think they only have 600 and some voters this last primary, that would have been easy to just hand count. And just for the heck of it, I mean, this is a primary, Republicans vote for Republicans, Democrats vote for Democrats. Compare the hand count to the machines and see what, what the difference was. It, that shows transparency. You know, if these machines are, are very, you know, if there's no, nothing going on, I mean, that's not that many votes. In fact, they did do some of those trials, and they still had had um, differences in numbers. And actually, you know, some of the things were, because it is a scanner, I don't know if people understand what the machine is, it's basically a scanner, scans the ballot in. Um, if you have a little mark on it or different things, it'll catch it. And then it can e easily misinterpret the, the vote. Mm -hmm. um, those are things that, that a hand count you know, doing it with people that you trust um, would eliminate. Now, so is there I, a problem? I say hand oh, count. go ahead. Okay. Now, is there a problem with these machines being uh, connected to the internet or something like that? I've heard mm -hmm. uh, various uh, discussion about about that being an issue, uh, and it, that could result in you know some form of. Uh, outright voter fraud is that is right. that something that you're aware of? Or? So we did look through the handbook and the capabilities of these machines. They are capable of being connected to the internet. Um, anything that has the capability of it, I think we should be questioning. The fact that they can print out with the ADA, which is the um, dis disability machines that help people that you know can't actually vote, you know, nor in the normal process, those. Those uh, machines can actually print out ballots that look like someone actually filled them in, a human. 
I mean, there's so many weird stuff that why would they make, why would they do that? I, I don't get it because if it's going to be filled up by the machine, it should be, it should look like a machine did it right. Um, there's so many questionable things about these machines and until we really have enough information on them and the fact that they can't be certified, we shouldn't be using them. You know, we have the capability to hand count. And I think that gives power back to our county clerks and, and our counties. Um, if you have confidence in elections, more people are going to come out and vote. And if and the opposite happens when you don't have confidence. And it's not going to be, you know, I think this current Secretary of State, she's pushing, you know, to increase our voting. But the fact is, is that by increasing, she's not she's not focusing on eligible voters. <laughs> she's it's everybody go out and vote. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a citizen, if you're um, eligible to vote in that state. It doesn't matter. She just wants to increase the numbers, and that's not the way to conduct our elections here. Right now, uh, at least uh, ostensibly, mm -hmm. any effort to uh, expand the voter rolls would have to be done legislatively uh, that doesn't mean i mean secretary of state does have uh, a lot to say about kind mm -hmm. of advocating for different positions but right. again the legislature like they were considering uh i think new mexico local elections would would be they wanted to make 16 year olds eligible as mm -hmm. i recall in that yes. original bill but that was a legislative proposal that the secretary of state yeah. to be fair did did advocate for you would advocate not to have that done right right Okay, um, so... So I guess our positions on some of the legislation will, right. would be definitely different. Right. Um, some things we, we, we agree on, you know. I do believe that technology is... We, we, we're not going to dismiss technology that makes things easier, but we have to make sure it's secure. And, you know, I'm all for making things more simplified, but we have to secure, have the security. I mean, you look at our lottery... It's been hacked so many times, and that has more security than, than our elections <laughs> when you look at the systems. So anything can be hackable, and that's not even including um, outside you know, our country. These people can interfere in our elections, and it's been done. You know, The United States has done that to other countries. Mm -hmm. So it's there to say that this is not happening or it's impossible that it can, be, can happen. It just it actually creates questions in the voters' minds that are these people really looking for our best interests? You know, we should question it. Audits, you know, audits are some way to make sure to give back confidence because if you believe you're doing the right thing, you know, the Secretary of says, says, State says that she's doing everything by the book, she's doing a great job, well, why not embrace audits to mm -hmm. prove that? Now, uh would you say that there were specific issues in either the 2020 presidential election or other parts of that election, components mm -hmm. of that election, or the recent primary election? Uh, did you, you know, I, I realize you don't have access to all of the information and resources, but right. did you see uh, any problems that you were specifically concerned about in the way those were conducted that that you wanted to raise red flags about mm -hmm. well for the 2020 election for instance you know we had poll watchers that that came to me when they found out that i'm running for secretary of state and they said you know they had people you know they were not able to do their job especially because of the covid they had the six foot you know um, guideline and they 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 couldn't um, there, the the verification of signatures was not being done. Um, there was a lot of things that were taken out of the security part of of elections, and they just it just there was so many questions. People just were not able to participate the way they're supposed to, and that was a concern. You know, I think we need to tighten our rules, not loosen them during emergency orders. You know, this may not be the last emergency order we have. There may be one in this next, you know, four years from now. Who knows? But we don't go and loosen rules. You know, if anything, we make sure that we secure our elections even further because that's our job. And right. then for what was the other question was um, the uh, the primary. Yeah. So 
in the primary, I don't know if you guys were watching closely the numbers that were coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one point I, you know, we screenshotted it and we actually have a, a live um, roll of everything that was going on. We saw huge dumps in two, in two elections and within seconds. I mean, it could have been the absentee ballots, but I saw, for instance, MLG, and she was not opposed. She had 144,000 votes in her, you know, showing up. And the funny thing about that was when it came down to the actual numbers, it was 124,000 or something like that, close to that. Um, Where did those 20,000 votes go? And the fact that also that Bernalillo had over 600 and some um, precincts that hadn't even been counted yet. So we saw those type of numbers that happened with the, with the um, Secretary of State as well. And they were like being dumped these numbers and they were taken out and then they were coming, you know, it was just so weird. And to me, seeing that doesn't give me any confidence in an election. <laughs> you right. know, I just, I, you know, the numbers should be going up. They should not be going down or up and down or whatever. We should have accurate numbers being recorded and it shouldn't be where it looks like, you know, something is going on. Even if it wasn't, it didn't look good. And that also goes back to the confidence in in the voters. So, you know, and then later on we found out that certain candidates didn't even get um, votes, that they knew they got votes in um, their own counties. And and, and who I'm talking about is um, Ethel Maharg. You know, she was one of the lower-numbered candidates and you know she's from Cuba and she knew for a fact that she had at least 20 people <laughs> that she knew she got mm-hmm. those votes and and they didn't show up so there is definitely something going on there I don't we need to really look into it all right um, so one of the things that uh, the Rio Grande Foundation worked on a few years back uh, that we attempted to stop was uh, the Secretary of State the current occupant uh, putting forth campaign finance rules on her own volition without the legislature. Now, yes. eventually the legislature, when it became, you know, in 2019, a pretty progressive body with a progressive governor, mm-hmm. uh, they embraced largely those campaign finance rules. But um, talk about that kind of thing. I, I know campaign finance is a pretty wonky area, but – uh, you talked about her not, you know, th- that office not being a legislative office. Right. Um, you know, obviously the legislature stepped in and did those mm-hmm. laws, but any anything in that boat, whether it's campaign finance or other areas, how do you influence the process without overstepping your boundaries? Right. Well, we just, we are the record keepers of New Mexico, right? That includes the campaign financing and what we have to do is is make sure that we're doing our job on our end. You know, everything that is recorded is is out there. It's transparent. Anybody, you know, that's using the, the system in place should be able to do without any kind of, you know, background on, on computer technology or something. I almost feel like this needs to be done in a layman's term. You know, it shouldn't be hidden or, or, or have the impression that things are being hidden on purpose. Um, to me, we need to build a, a team of of um, even people that are working within the Secretary of State that are confident in their positions, that know what what to answer or how to help people find things um, without going in circles. I feel a lot of times you call to the Secretary of State office, especially if you're running for an office, and you're oh they they send you to different places or they even don't even answer the phone at all so um i think we need to make sure that we have as far as the managerial position of this job take care of those kind of things you know make sure we have people that know their jobs and their positions um streamline that you know we're gonna have to look at the the i know when i ran in 2017 um we had a whole different system that was online for the CFIS reporting. And I almost think that that was actually a lot better. <laughs> it was a lot more transparent. And then they, they put a brand new one in. And 
it's hard to find things in that thing and it's not so transparent you know a lot of information that was asked in the prior um, CFIS website was not transferred into this this one so I just think they kind of made it a lot easier to funnel money through there and and not have accountability of where it's coming from so all right well um Anything we missed in this conversation that you want to emphasize about uh, the role of the Secretary of State and how you would uh, address the, the issues uh, that are uh, taking place in New Mexico around voting and uh, election integrity? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to do some short commercials and we are going to go, um, well, because my opponent had placed a notice on the official Secretary of State website entitled Rumors Versus Reality, um, fact-checking information about New Mexico's voting and elections. We like to discuss those things and talk about the reasons why we are questioning it. Because it was very one-sided, very partisan, and I think that people need to hear the other side. So we're going to do that, and that's going to be happening through my campaign. And you'll start seeing those. And, I, and anybody who's interested, you know, we're going to have facts. We're going to have websites. We're going to have actual information that comes from the Secretary of State um, to back up every single thing that we're talking about. Because one of the things that I hear in this whole um, campaign is we're lying. We're, we're, what do they call us? Election deniers. We're mm -hmm. not denying any election happened. What we want to do is we want to defend our elections. That's where, where I come in. I, I want to be a defender of our elections. I want to make sure everybody's eligible vote counts. That's important to me. All right. Um, how do people find out about your campaign? Well, I, my website is Audrey, A-U-D-R-E-Y, True, T-R-U-E, Hero, H-E-R-O, number four, N-M, dot com. And you can sign up to volunteer. You can donate to our campaign. Um, there's so many things that we're connecting to that website to help the voters also to make sure to check your, you know, registration, to change registration if you need to do that. And it's just to help the voter, you know, prior to our elections. So we're really trying to step in right away and, and do the things that a Secretary of State should be doing. All right. Well, thank you for your time today and good luck in your campaign in uh, this November. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Find all episodes at tippingpointnm.com or at the Rio Grande Foundation's YouTube channel. Subscribe to the show at Apple, Stitcher, or have your Google Home play Tipping Point New Mexico. Thanks to Path3 Marketing for producing this show. Thanks so much. For